Hello. In the last lecture, we introduced the subject of planning and the how it can be contextual and the relevant for the housing. Uh, we started and we summed up the discussion um, um, on policy matters uh, and then we introduced the subject of the planning. So, today we will see the, the how the urban and regional planning works uh, in, a, in a policy way after the policy is framed at for the region and the cities that we will see in the today's lecture. So, so, before we go to the today's lecture, these are the uh, points we discussed in the last lecture like we discussed the various um, uh, parameters of the planning, it is uh, contextual, it is specific to the geographic area, it can be long, medium and short term uh, period. The planning follows the policy mandates and it is done at the multi level planning, multi level uh, from the higher to lower and definitely it is a it prescribes the specific uh, need for the people for the future and it involves technical input by the people and also it involves people's participation as well when during the preparation phase. Now, we will go to the next stage. So, this uh, uh, pictures uh, this slide probably I showed before also that right now we have three types of government central government, state government and local government under the local government. Um, uh, paradigm. There are two sets of local government. One can be uh, in the village center like Panchayat Samiti, uh, Community Development Block, the Gram Panchayat and Gram Sabha and we could have municipality, municipal corporation, Nagar Panchayat, Ward Committee and Area Sabha. So, our main objective is to concentrate into, into this level, the local, local government level. Uh, basically, the local government level, they uh, they, they provide the housing at the ground. So, our objective of overall discussion on the housing planning will be based on the local government level and more or less it will be focused on the urban areas. So, one of the major changes um, uh, in the last few years in the overall planning and development is that earlier the, uh, the problem the, the programs was designed at the central level and it used to come down at the local level usually, but right now we do the plan from the area sava or the gram sava and the plan is consolidated at the central level. So, the major change uh, in the planning approach in the development approach is from uh, central state level uh, to the local government level. So, earlier it was top down approach and now we are going to a bottom up approach. So, we will see how it can work in uh, it is working in India. So, we do this at the multi level planning in India. So, let us discuss the what is the multi level planning. We discuss three types of government is there like central government, state government and there are districts. So, districts are part of central government and then there are local government. So, we make the planning for every level. So, this is the tier 1, this is the tier 2 and this is the tier 3 of government right. So, the planning exercise we do here is the five year plan we do at the central level, central government does this. For this state similarly we do the 5 year plan, sometimes for districts and also the metropolitan area, now here I will take another 1 or 2 minutes to explain this part because this is very very important as per the housing uh, planning is concerned. In most of the districts, we will be covering uh, the element of urban and rural, urban and rural both um, type of um, uh, the area, but you will find many cities having continuous uh, development of the urban area which, um, which continues beyond the one or two city, one or two districts. Basically, those are called as metropolitan area because it is not limited to a particular district or particular area, it combines many areas of many districts. So, while we will make a district plan 
of a particular district, uh, it the, all the district plans may not be sufficient to uh, to to serve the purpose of a metropolitan area because the metropolitan area is a part of various district because it is a continuous development of the urban areas. Maybe district one, district two, district three, like this. But it it is a whole urban areas. So for all these kind of areas the state government they can declare or they can identify such metropolitan area as a bigger cities for example all the major cities kolkata mumbai uh, bangalore chennai all are metropolitan area uh, which is basically capital city of the states and which is combining uh, multiple districts for this metropolitan areas or the districts we may do 25 year plan plan sometimes it can it can be termed as vision plan or perspective plan. Perspective plan and also this plan will be followed by followed by 5 year plan as well and at the local level we make the city development plan for Five year. Now the question is why we are uh, for the districts and the metropolitan area we are going for 25 year long term plan uh, whereas for the central area central uh, at the, uh, um, the national 5 year plan and the state level 5 year plan is done because the district and metropolitan area is a not only economic plan it also it is a basically a complex process it uh, combines the, the economic physical and the social cultural aspects as well that is why and it is very very specific in the very uh, geographical area. So, it is a long term um, uh, frame long, long time frame to, uh, to, uh, to, to prescribe the specific prescription but therefore, but it is divided into various uh, segments of 5 years so that it can be relate, uh, related with the city development plan as well. But for the local government we do this the planning for the uh, city for 5 years sometimes it is called as CDP or DDP city development plan or draft development plan. So, this is the, the plan. Uh, now, who is the competent authority to make to, to prepare to formulate this plan? Basically, at the central level we have earlier we had planning commission, commission, but right now we are not uh, continuing this planning commission. We have currently Niti Aayog which is basically national institute for transforming India. It is basically overall uh, the, the body the, uh, the body which gives the overall policy and the planning uh, input to the government. So, whatever it is um, uh, the, uh, the current uh, right now the, the plan and the policy all policy is done by the Niti Aayog. And the, and the state level the either the, the state planning board state planning board or different uh, organizations are there uh, whoever is the uh, authority who are, who are delegated or who are uh, given the authority to make the state uh, the, the five year state, uh, state state plan they make the state plan for each uh, respective states and then at this district level basically district planning committee in short it is DPC and if the area is called as a metropolitan area as we discussed it could be called as metropolitan planning committee. So, in short it is MPC. So, district planning committee and metropolitan planning committee is the combination of uh, a few technical and elected member from the districts or metropolitan area who will take the highest uh, the, the last decision of any project any plan. So, this DPC, DPC and MPC either DPC or MPC they are the final authority to finalize the plan before the final uh, 
um, uh, final go ahead signal is given by the state government because state government is the final authority to approve the plan, but the decisions are made at the uh, district planning and uh, uh, metropolitan planning committee level. Then at the city level basically the city authority city authority like municipal corporation, municipal corporation, development authority, or municipality, they are also uh, entitled to make this city development plan. Under the smart city mission, right now the government of India has a major program uh, called smart city mission. Under the smart city mission, uh, few uh, uh, different organizations will be uh, made uh, to prepare the development plan. So, for that uh, the mechanism is little different, but they will work in, um, in, in uh, synchronization with the municipal local authority like municipal corporation and the development authority. And the whole finance after the planning exercise is conducted, the whole finance is conducted by the central finance commission, here the state finance commission, okay. they allocate the resource for the development. So, this is the, the multi level planning framework in India. So, this is the multi level planning, we basically we make three levels of planning and after the local government planning is done, basically we make the further grassroots level planning like area sava. Sabha and Gram Sabha planning. So, this planning is this input of this local level grassroots level planning is given to city development plan and this plan for 5 year is made and following the 5 year plan we make also 1 year annual plan. So, 1 year objective of 1 year annual plan will be to give yearly budget to give to provide the yearly indication of the projects and budget. So, that is done for each um, city authorities, each de development authority and finally, it is allocated distributed over the gram servers or area servers as per the uh, context. So, let us now see the overall picture in a better way. So, that is what we discussed. So, this is the section, this is the, uh, the level which we have to discuss because most of the planning and the development are done at the uh, local level and after that further grassroots level plans are done that we discussed. Now, we discuss what are the uh, urban plans, what are the categories of the urban plans. We already discussed that here uh, the 5 year plan at the central level or the state level 5 year plans are done, but so one is basically perspective plan or the vision plan for 25 years. Another this is the first category which we do for the regions or sometimes for the bigger cities or the um, like say uh, national capital region or any capital uh, um, region area and after that we also do the 5 year plan for this is the second category of plan 5 year plan and also we do the annual plan that is the third category of plan we do. So, this is the typologies of the plan we do and after this annual plan, the annual plan will be consisting of various projects. Now, the, the 5 year, the, the, the basically city development plan or draft development plan which we discussed, it is a common comprehensive planning document, but if the city is very large or the region is very large, within that document we do the various hub, the strategy document. So, it is a plan document with followed with compensated with various strategy document. For example, strategy document can be for transport, housing, land, various other matters. So, with this is the this the city development plan or draft development plan is the basic stage where we do all kind of planning exercise for each and every sector of the development. Now, let us see the So, perspective plan is done for long term 20 to 20 to 30 years, development plan is done for 5 years or so, annual plan 1 year and project reports or project or scheme is done for um, uh, only uh, as, as per the requirement. Now, this is the overall pictures of the planning hierarchy, how we do for the uh, annual plan at the local level to the national level which is 5 year plan. 
Now, how do you do the planning? Any planning, uh, we talked about the planning and we differentiated the planning than the uh, policy regarding uh, two matters that pol uh, the planning is always contextual about the location or the geography area and contextual with the people over there. So, since it is a contextual, it cannot be fictitious, it cannot be uh, abruptly anything out of this theory, uh, planning has to be contextual and specific uh, to the people's need of that area. So, first stage of the planning process is that, that what we do is the, we study the whole area in a greater details, which we call as a situation assessment. So, based on the policy and overall uh, perspective plan we set some vision and objective that what can be objective and vision for the area and then we we fall we uh, we make a very detailed uh, description detailed study of the existing uh, scenario uh, existing scenario related to land related to finance related to environment related to housing typology every element transportation uh, the, the environmental condition every aspect and then we analyze its condition um, its current status it is simply as comparable like when we go for a medical checkup, the doctor specifies several checks and we, we uh, uh, after the checks we can compare the uh, level of the parameters on uh, with a standard parameter. Similarly, for a uh, city development plan or planning process, we check every every status of the existing scenario based on some standards or norms which is already there in practice and based on that we can analyze the situation whether it is a good or bad or what are the areas of the issue of the concern or what are the issues what are the problems. After that we go for we project the population based on the existing population we project we synthesize the requirement of the future population, what is the uh, requirement of the infrastructure, requirement of the investment in the housing, investment in the road, investment, every sector we, uh, we project, then synthesize and we develop few development options which is uh, going in line with vision and objectives and uh, which will uh, solve the existing scenario or the existing problem. And based on that, we propose the the sectoral strategy, sectoral strategy means uh, we talked about the sectoral strategy, housing, infrastructure, transport strategy and followed by the projects. So, if the city is not very large like say 1 lakh or 2 lakh say, um, population, maybe within the city development plan we, uh, we prescribe the sectoral uh, such strategy. But if the city is very large like a metropolitan city uh, like uh, Bangalore or any uh, or uh, Mumbai or any uh, bigger cities. So, sectoral plan becomes itself is a very uh, um, uh, um, complex exercise. For example, water supply plan, water supply plan of a metropolitan area, the transportation mobility plan, the housing plan or investment plan or environmental plan. So, these strategies are made separately and dovetail together with the uh, the mother document, mother city de, uh, city plan and then we come to a projects. That is the overall uh, process of the, this is this process is generalized process, this may not be uh, uh, in, in, in all the planning uh, exercise which we do in, in various other uh, programs and intervention, this process can be uh, fragmented into various micro stages, micro options or micro uh, uh, modules, but this is the overall um, uh, overall framework of the planning which we follow usually. So, for the planning exercise, let us discuss the, what are the basic parameters we deal. The first parameter is the land use. We talked, we told you that uh, the, the planning exercise is essentially a contextual exercise and the physical, plan, physical exercise because we give the final prescription on land, how much land is required for the future populace, population and housing is never uh, possible without the actual land is there. So, land is the first thing which we uh, prescribe. So, land use, there are various types of land use, um, um, residential, commercial, institutional, industrial. So, what type of land will come where, in which direction, what quantum, what density that we propose in a, in a, in a city development plan. So, land use plan is the in the outcome. Based on the land use plan, we, we propose the uh, the infrastructure uh, in every aspect, infrastructure in terms of water supply, the mobility, the sanitation, solid waste management and um, uh, power supply. Not only the infrastructure, we also uh, 
indicate the facilities and amenities like the community facilities, the health facilities, the, uh, the, um, the education facilities, commercial entertainment facilities, every type of facilities and public amenities like say um, uh, what kind of amenities in the streets will be required, what kind of amenities will be required in the, uh, in the public places or the, or the parks everything we, we give a guidelines, we give a indication that this kind of uh, development framework will be possible. Not only that, after the discussion of the land use and the infrastructure facilities and amenities, we indicate that what is the norms or standards we are going to achieve for the city. For, ex for an example, a city like say Mumbai or Delhi uh, can take a norms of water supply or water utilization or consumption as 200 liter per capita per day. Whereas, a city like uh, very small city like say Rurki which is about 2 lakh population can take a um, norms and standards that it can take 135 or 100 liter per capita per day. So, that is the uh, difference that the decision we take at the uh, planning level for each sector each uh, area. So, that next level when we go for the projects we can take that um, parameter or the norms and direct we can come to the projects. So, this is a uh, example of uh, typical plan which we do. This is a uh, master plan of Delhi. Uh, it is taken from the uh, published master plan of Delhi. Now, you can see in this plan that various color codes are there. The yellow color codes depicts the residential area, future residential area. The red color which you can see is a major uh, large um, level or the higher level commercial areas in terms of the what they call as a district center. The greens are the city level green areas. This is not a very uh, small public places or public parks or these small tot lots area. Uh, these are large green space which can uh, serve the city or the sub city or the region. For example, these green areas is serving the total region of this where the population will be 1 lakh or 2 lakh or so. So, small green areas, small facilities are, uh, are included in the in the in the residential area which is not shown separately in the uh, in the land use plan so the yellow color for the residential you can see is basically a gross color it includes the net residential plot area the the plots used for the commercial or the uh, the public recreational like open space and local level roads so don't be confused with the color codes the color code shown here is the gross uh, land use areas the minute details are not shown in the overall um, overall city master plan but when we'll do the sectoral master plan and sectoral detailing of the layouts of the each and every sector that time definitely will show the net land use which is nothing but the land use of the each and every plot and not only the, uh, the, the land use as per the technical color code, the sum of the areas uh, can be given a special control mechanism like old city area, the areas reserved for the uh, airport, some zones are identified for the future development. So, this kind of prescriptions which is very specific in the as per the geographical configuration is there. You can see that this is the river Yamuna, but both side of the river Yamuna how, how they have uh, preserved the land for the um, for the uh, ecological and the environmental purpose this land is preserved and not uh, suitable for the the development that's why it is not given any specific land use so it is a land use which is preserved for the environmental purpose so a land use plan will give a land use plan which is a geographical plan or map and it will give a description and the legend of the color code and its description so that is how we, we present a land use plan for each and every city. But this land use plan is not sufficient. This is a, uh, is a symbolic or, or, or color wise indication of the future uh, development of the city. But how we will develop each and every parcel of the, of, the, of the building when a person comes to the city authority with a building plan, with a proposal, um, we simply cannot say uh, that this is uh, yellow or this is red or this is different colors. We need few more control mechanism, control parameters which basically influences the uh, three dimensional building like say height or the uh, width, breadth, ground coverage several few others uh, dimensions are there the, the 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 density and the few more parameters so do those we deal in the 
the building control uh, which we call as a planning control tools which is not a basically geographical plan but which is not geographical but its implication will be geographical like building uh, development control. So, under the planning control tools we have land use control, land use control means the color code prescribed in the master plan that how much that color clothes, uh, color, color codes are flexible. For example, the residential use prescribed in, in the master plan, whether you can have any other mixed use in the residential plan or not, whether you can, you are a doctor, you can have a doctor's chamber or not. This kind of flexibility or the extent of flex flexibility is prescribed in the, in the planning controls or the master plan document. So, master plan is a basically combination of the plan, map and a document. And in the land use control, not only the extent of uh, the mixed land use, also we have to prescribe that what are the uh, what are the land uses which are not permitted in a prescribed area. So that is very very important because if uh, we permit the um, the incompatible land use, which makes undesired result in 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 in, 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 uh, in combination with any other land use, that is not good for the development. So in land use control, we have to prescribe that what are the land uses or land use mix can be prescribed or permitted what cannot be permitted that should be very specifically prescribed and all the master plans or the city de development plan has this kind of prescription. The second part is the development control regulation which is nothing but the after the land use control of any particular land we have to make a building. When you talk about a housing project or any commercial project ultimately you have to construct a building. So, how the building will look like? how many floors will be there, what will be the height, what will be the total floor area, what is the extent of the floor area, what is the limit of the floor area which you can build. So, those questions will be answered through the development control regulation. So, development control regulation basically prescribes the control related to building and the and the fee of the infrastructure, whereas the land use control basically prescribes the control of the land and its use, predominant use. Apart from the building control regulations, we could have building rules and laws. Now, these two works in, 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 in combination. The basic difference of the regulation and rules are rules basically prescribe the process of developing a building, the process of uh, executing a building project, executing a housing project or any building project. Whereas, the building development control regulation or building regulation or uh, building regulation they prescribes the, the specification of the building, the codes of the, the and the sizes of the building components, its safety features, its security features like say um, 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 seismic safety uh, or, or other natural safety, natural hazard safety and the fire safety and the, um, the light and ventilation aspect, all the uh, desired aspect of the architectural design and the structural design aspect is mentioned in the regulation, whereas the rules are made to prescribe the process basically. Apart from the, uh, the building, its land, its development control, we also prescribe various kind of control related to advertisement, trade, license everything because in a city apart from the building there are various kinds of elements and uh, which makes a city which makes a city image. So, on which the advertisement is very very important the holders how we can regulate that also uh, is a part of planning control. Then how we can uh, control the, the activities which is related to trade, how we can uh, promote the licensing to the, uh, the, uh, to the, um, the businessman. So, related to those we can make various kinds of rules and, and the local acts, local uh, regulation at the municipal level or the uh, development authority level. So, in the next lecture we will take few more uh, case studies and we uh, uh, show the in the case studies that how this control tools, um, uh, control mechanisms are made and how this can, these are implemented and what are the its, its uh, implication. So, today we basically discussed the multi-level planning, multi-level planning is nothing but the we discussed the central government, state government and the local government level planning and what are the uh, planning document they do. At the central government, they do the five year plan, the state government, they also do five year plan. At the district level, they do the, the perspective plan, vision plan for 25 years and in the city level, we make the plan for five year, which we call city development plan. If the city is very weak, 
uh, like say metropolitan area it can be called as a metropolitan plan and uh, the planning is done by the district planning committee and metropolitan or metropolitan planning committee whereas for the central government or the five year plan the niti ayog they are they, they are taking the policy and planning at the central level state planning boards are there they are taking the planning at the state level similarly at the local level city authorities or the development authorities are there who takes up the planning exercise at the local level so if the cities are bigger uh, uh, after the city development plan or within the city development plan we have to uh, detail out various sectors of the development like housing and transportation or many other sector sectors so that we can finally end up in various projects and schemes and then we discussed today the the basic planning process planning process deals with four basic process one is vision then we uh, study the existing situation of the state city in a greater details then we come to analysis and projection level then we uh, and make the options and finally we end up in the and uh, the strategy and 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 the projects that is the basic pro the stages we came to the uh, final part of this um, um, the discussion where we discuss the control uh, tools what we deal in the planning basically we deal the land using the land use control we deal the building using building regulations and rules we deal the other elements in a city like the advertisement hoarding and other uh, you know, various small elements using the and the livelihood element using the advertisement rules trade rules licensing rules everything which can be done at the uh, at the local level so this is the overall planning framework we, uh, we, 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 we again reinforce this point that this planning framework or the planning exercise is done very specifically for a given geographic location whereas policy is broad. So, based on the planning framework we also um, uh, seen uh, a picture of a typical planning of Delhi master plan where specific color codes are prescribed. So, next day we will see the, uh, the few more example of the uh, master plans of the city development plan and within that plan how they have detailed out every sectors like housing or the uh, transportation every sector then we will come to the next level. So, so for today thank you.